This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, guys, uh, welcome to the Pete and Sebastian Show. Again, the guests just keep coming. Now, I, I, if you're familiar with the show, great. If not, great. We don't have a lot of guests. You don't? No. Uh, and, and just recently, Pete and I... I've been reaching out to people and going, you know what, we should mix it up a little bit, get some guests in here. So, uh, and again, busy man. Busy right? man. <laughs> lot really, going on. A lot going on. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Renaissance man, by the way. Writing, acting, performing, improv Yeah, yeah and, I, and I want to get into that. I thought you meant Renaissance man just because of the beard. And I want to ask you I about- I thought you meant because of the profile. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, they look like us in profile. In those <laughs> so, so listen, t- talk yeah, about yeah. Have you always had a beard? Uh, no, I, I, I always wanted a beard. Okay. Uh, you know- I was a the kid who at 16 was four foot 11, five feet tall. I was the kid on the back of my friend's bike who could be, he used to be called Bucked, where I was always the little guy. Okay. And so once puberty and facial hair started, I just went like, oh, fucking paradise. You're all in. And I'm all in. And yeah, then to yeah. this day, I'm kind of like, now when I shave, uh, I shaved uh, about a year ago or six, eight months ago, and my wife said, uh, uh, she's like, it's too much. And I go, what do you mean? She's like, it's almost like if somebody shaves their pubes, it's too much dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, wow. I'm used to it. Now she goes like, oh, wow. a really good example. She goes, I, I love you. I love you. Yeah, she yeah. goes, I, I met you without a beard, but she's like, it's just too much. And I'm right. like, I hear you. Yeah. You've all got used to it. A little bit of dark and covered here. Right. Let's stick with it. And it's cool. Yeah, it's it like, you know what it says? It says, I don't know. Listen, I don't get up at nine necessarily. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't have a great jawline. <laughs> but, but do you think, uh, I have to ask Jake, how yes, much sir. do you think your size growing up affected your personality growing up? And like molded who Huge. you were. You, right? Did you feel like you needed to be bigger with your voice? Like No, but I also or... I felt like I could always talk shit and there yeah. was no value in the other guy kicking my ass because I was little. Nice. And then when I grew and I was in college, I'd be talking the same shit I did and somebody, I'd be like, oh, I'm now of size. Right. So yeah. the chipping, the, the volume, the gunning uh, yeah. was very much as a little guy. Yeah. Oh, and the so little she, guy, you just kind of go like, shut yeah. the fuck, shut up. You're like a guy who grew to be seven foot, but I learned to dribble because I didn't know it was going <laughs> to yeah, be. It's like, oh, a wow, day, blow. it's like a modern day NBA player. <laughs> These seven yeah. foot ten guys yeah. have handles and you go like, I don't get it, man. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so uh, I want to touch on, we, we were in a movie together, a tag, mm-hmm. right? Now, I played a priest, I had a very small role. I don't do a lot of movies. Obviously, you're a, you're, you're a veteran in, the, in 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 that that game. So I come on the set, and I felt like you guys obviously were working together for a while. You know, this was towards the end of the movie. We yeah. were filming that that scene, and I don't make friends well. This uh, is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, a real I, thing. Yeah, like I'm not the guy to go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I, guess that. No, no, I'm, not, yeah, yeah. I'm not like Mr. Like, I come to set and go, hey, oh, yeah, 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 my name's yeah, yeah, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 are, you, are you that type no. of, if you come in late no. in the game, are no. you introducing yourself to people? And I only the people who uh, I'm directly doing the scene with, uh, and that's only for the chemistry of it. Mm-hmm. But I am not there to be the mayor. Okay. Do you okay. know pe- people th- that do that? Because I, I felt yeah. like I, I felt like I was coming in to school, uh, and you guys were all s- like seniors, oh, and I was, and, and I got transferred mid year. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it was a weird experience for you. Yes, and it, I, I at that point I hadn't done really many yeah. movies, so I didn't really know. I'm nervous. Oh, you were very nervous. I'm working with a lot of you know. Actors that have, you know, I'm yeah. in a scene with uh, Bib and, and Renner. Right, because right? you and I weren't in a scene together. N- no, no, but I think you were there at the the wedding scene. I don't know if I was. Because when you first said tag, 
I thought you were doing like a bit because obviously, you know, I was like, I don't think we ever worked together. No, I mean, we we didn't have a scene together, yeah, but, but I, I, I might have been like in the background of something. Yeah, you were. You how long were you off filming the movie though? You per se, do you remember how long about you were two, on? Uh, two months, six weeks, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But right. it was like a so big you were part of the family. Well, kind of. It was a big ensemble. So yeah. a lot of us there, That it wasn't a tight-knit group. Oh, it wasn't? I, no. And I don't mean that like I'm talking shit. Oh, wow. You yeah. were really on the out. They but weren't even enjoying each other's company. Friends. And they didn't even want to let <laughs> you in on the non-enjoyable like, here, here in this read, like, I've heard people say, like, they like when I did New Girl, right? And that's a cast I did for seven years. I knew them well. Guesting on that, I would, with this tone, I'd be like, I hear you, because we were like weird cousins. Okay. But- Everybody for that movie, they all stayed in some like loft downtown. I was in the suburbs of Georgia. I brought my kids there. Oh, okay. So I wasn't in whatever the group was. I hung out with Ham every once in a while and I knew Annabelle and everyone was nice. But there wasn't like a tight knit group. It oh, was okay. more like we all showed up and tried to catch up to what the movie was about. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I, but I, keep going. I want to hear your. I'm not knowing this. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, these guys been working together for two months. Yeah, yeah, Here I come in. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm the priest. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm, I'm like, hey, yeah. get my lines right. This, you know. So I, I, when I went into that experience, it was. It was nerve wracking just because I felt like I was coming in and on the latter part of it all. But that being said, I I, I did have I I did make friends with Bib. Yes, and she later she's so on, funny. She's so funny, so funny, and she later became my wife in a in a movie I did. I want to ask you, um, you know, directing, yeah. writing, acting. Do you have a preference, or are you one of these guys? I'm fascinated yeah. by your, your the, 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 like he directs and then he's acting right. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Like when I'm acting in a movie, I got no time <laughs> to be doing other things, right? Like right. it's like cut. Right. I go back and I, I get the lines ready for the next yeah. scene, and you're going and you're going nah. Let's switch yeah. it up a little bit, and then you gotta go. So, yeah, sorry to tangent. You know how funny you are. I mean, we're in your palace, but well, your wanna... rhythms are so good, man. <laughs> it just reminds me yeah. of being a kid yeah. with uncles. Uh, <laughs> you know, you my my dad. Uh, his nickname was Croco. Uh, he was a car salesman or owned a car dealership on the south side. But very few people do that slow rhythm that you pull off so perfectly. Right. Where it's he'd go like, you know, you're in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> the beast, <laughs> you, my fucking kid. With these big, okay? and, You're practically it, yelling but, though with the whisper yeah, he does. Right? Right? But that rhythm, <laughs> like it hits me to my bones. You yeah, know? And yeah, then yeah, I try yeah. to pull it off, and my yeah. brother would be like, "Speed up!" <laughs> I'll go like, "Damn, you do it." He'll go, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> <laughs> and as you were doing it with the director, I was like, "Putty." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm directing. I'm in the scene." Yeah. Yeah. Were you doing that or were you going, speed it up? No, God. no. The, the, uh, I, I got kids. <laughs> no, the opposite. I was like, oh, fucking drink it up, man. Uh, honestly, for me, directing was never the goal. I never thought about it. I'm not that technical. So that whole world of it uh, was not the, there are certain director directors who I love who have it all in their head. They know that I work, you know, who know the, the lenses. They know it all and they see it. Mine was... Uh, I knew I wanted to do this business because as a kid and goofing around and seeing Bill Murray and John Belushi and, all, and Farley and knowing the second city was in Chicago, I wanted to do this, but I didn't know what this was. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a stand-up. So I, I never even thought of that. I just thought you just do like ensemble acting, you get part of things and it works. And then when I moved out here and I started doing TV and movies, you realize how much control the director has, not just of the finished product, but like how the comedy and the tone happens. And so I started realizing there were certain directors I liked more than others. And so I wanted to direct to just to create the vibe on set. So for example, if you and I are on a scene and I'm like, fuck, I get to like work with Sebastian. He's so funny. And the director goes, great. Just say these lines exactly as is. And I go, right. And then when Sebastian does his rhythm, it's the funniest, right? Yeah. And they go, yeah, yeah, but on this, we're going fast. Now we are doing it how that person wants. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you feel it and you're like, it's just not that funny. Yeah. yeah. And it could be. Yeah. And then yep. after two yep. takes, they go like, we got it. Yeah. And you're like, 
I'm not even sweating. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm in Atlanta, motherfucker. Right, I got on a plane for right, this. Like right. we haven't even started, and then ever had a video of OJ's going like, "We're so good." Oh my god! And then you get when you start, you get excited. Yeah, and then you see it, and you go like, "You could have got more out of me." Right. Yeah. And so I'm start. I, the that was my kind of desire to go to the other end of just saying like, "All right, we nailed the script," but if we shoot the way you're shooting here, which is cross covered. Why put all three just on me? Then do it again, put all three on you. So in scenes for my movie, there was always a camera on everybody. So that if you happen to say something in the moment and it's perfect, yeah, that could be the best moment of our scene. Uh, and, yeah. and it's because you were listening and you were present. Right. I don't then want the whole crew to laugh. Then we relight, turn the camera on you and try to recreate it. And you go like, it wasn't funny the second time. Yeah. And so that's why I got into directing. I felt like I'd been around so many sets where I would see the funniest thing happen slightly off camera. Yeah. And I would go like, fuck, if the audience saw that. Yeah. And man. so I thought, uh, yeah. I got to learn this other side. So I started studying DPs and asking questions. And the nice thing about sets is everybody's willing to tell you what they do. Mm -hmm. So saying to a DP, why are you shooting it this way? They're like, you're asking me? <laughs> camera operators why do you do this rather than that yeah. and i felt like oh i'm getting a free education oh wow. well yeah so so have you what read a delicate answer to say well i thought most directors weren't as good as i could do it <laughs> <laughs> i'm also running for mayor baby <laughs> you guys are all wonderful yeah. great to meet you <laughs> <laughs> new, new Girl was a three camera shoot, right? Yeah, was yeah, it yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. New Girl was single cam. Oh, it was single cam. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, did yeah, you yeah. have a writer's room? Because I wrote on sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, uh, where well, you're in the writer's room yeah, and I'm yeah. not the showrunner. Yeah, and yeah. like, sometimes I'd say something that would make everybody laugh. Yes. And I could see the showrunner go, now I got to explain why I'm not using that yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. line. <laughs> and you just, Grab every I, does the showrunner have to know everyone in the room wants yeah. your yeah. job? <laughs> yes. You know, because there's nothing worse when someone goes, no. I hate it. So that's the other part of it i do feel like directors because i totally know that feeling and sometimes directors do a thing that i hate and that is they say i gotta go with my instinct well, your right. instinct might be wrong right and so i like the best idea wins so sometimes that best idea can be like set design where they go the set designer goes oh it'd be great like this and the director goes no 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 it's got to be blue and you go well well this person put like three weeks of thought into it you just said blue yeah. And so for mine, when I hired people, part of the meeting was, if you're right, win the debate. We can argue a little bit. Yeah. But I do want best idea to win. So the DP, Adam Silver, and I, we would like playfully battle where I'm like, oh, it's like if I'm saying cross cover, he would go, yes, but the movie can't look bad. So I'd be like, great, but we have to cover everything. He goes, I, I don't want to make something that looks like a shitty sitcom. So then I'm like, so how do we do it? And he would go, I can give you a single here. But this, rather than crossing it, what if we did like a two shot and we were pushing in? And he's like, you could still use it, but it's not going to be as close up. And then I would look at the frame and go like, the two shot's pretty cool. And yeah. it's filmic and it's beautiful. So then rather than going single, single, one is pushing in and one is my single. Then we reverse on you and that's still doing another push in. Right. So that wasn't my idea. That was his. And so I liked the best idea kind of winning. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. It was, fun. It was like yeah. really a fun experience to be like, when I would watch a director and I would go, can we cross cover it? If I'm in a scene, if you and I are together, and I, you know, Tom Zick, the reason I did tag was because of Jeff. Mm -hmm. And Jeff is a great guy and a, a really talented guy. And we could have those discussions of like, yeah. if you got all these people together, let's let us play a little. Yeah. So the other directors will say that. And then when you get there, you'll go like, hey, can Sebastian and I be in a two shot? I would like love to see what happens. And they would go like, it's impossible. <laughs> and you go like, well, we're talking about making a stupid movie. Anything's possible, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just don't want to do it. Yeah. And now you're the boss. So now I have to say to you on your first movie, and I'm not talking Tom Zick now, but your first movie now, I have to go, okay. So now we all are listening to you because you're overwhelmed. Yeah. And you're just saying, I got to trust my instinct. But there is a way. Right. <laughs> well, totally. Man. And that stuff was what I was like, I just want to do it. I want to try it and see how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I'm I'm so new to this and I wanna I wanna rewind a little bit on your comment about uh yeah, we got it, moving on. Mm -hmm. Uh a lot of times when they say, Okay, moving on, I'm like, um where? 
Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like you, I'm not, I'm not sweating yet. I'm yes. not, I, I'm not feeling it worked. yet. You haven't worked or like we haven't like explored all the possibilities here. I'm not saying we got to do 12 takes on right. the thing, but I feel a lot of times my instincts are telling me, no, I didn't feel right. There's more, but then sometimes I'm new to this and yeah. I'm like, oh, well, maybe this guy knows better because he's been doing this longer than I have. Are you at the point where you go, uh, no, we ain't moving on or, or depends on the project. Yeah. Or it, it so just, not really. So the problem is, is I don't want to be an actor who ruins a director's day because uh, you can be because if a director, they're working with the line producer, they have their whole schedule. They're really trying to make a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. And if they see my role, let's say I'm just coming in, it's a, a scene where I'm a cashier. And they go like, you got some good bits, but this is all we need you for. They have a th 11 hours of work to do in 10 hours. So they go, Jake's easy. We got it. If I go like, ah, 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 can I go again? They kind of have to listen, but it does kind of screw up their day. Mm, right. So it depends on the job. It depends on the person. And then I started realizing I need to have all those talks before I start. Because what I don't like doing is, and you know when you're disappointing somebody, I hate being on a set and disappointing somebody. It's not why we got into this. Mm. We got into this to like, you know, make people happy yeah. and have people go like, oh, I like that thing. Yeah. And then when you're making the director unhappy, it doesn't feel right. So I try to, before I take a job, have these talks so that you could say like, on certain scenes, do we have the time? Or is, this, is this the kind of relationship where I am allowed to open it up? And yeah. a lot of people go like, absolutely, totally. And then when you talk more, you realize... They're just trying to get you to set. And on those jobs, I try to sniff them out and pass on them. Wow. Because there's other people who can yeah. do that who will be thrilled, who don't want to have that sweaty feeling. They want to do have, the thing and be done. Have you ever, though, you almost put more pressure on yourself, though. Like, have you ever said, can I do another take? And they go, yeah. And then as you're doing the next take, yes. are you like, oh, my God, I'm doing it exactly the fucking <laughs> yeah. same way. <laughs> yes. And that's humiliating. And then, and then you go, and then, and then all right, I thought I had something else. I yeah, guess yeah, they don't yeah, pack yeah, it yeah. up, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's shameful. <laughs> You're such a likable guy. I can see that they don't even mind when you do that yeah, shit. They just go like this. Oh. Yeah. And then what you, the the people who really tell you, which is funny, is the uh, the old head uh, crew members. So yeah. the video village after will be like, that was really funny. Good job. And they're trying to keep your ego up. And then like the director will go like, yeah. And yeah. your castmates will kind of give you a look like, oh, it's fine. Uh, yeah. And then it'll be one camera operator. They'll go like, oh, thank God Jake got that take. Uh, and people will laugh <laughs> too hard and you got to go like, that was the only person being real. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I wasted, every, I wasted four minutes of everybody's life. Uh, you know. But then you have the stories of like Leonardo DiCaprio and those fools always do it. And they don't stop. And then you look at the performance and you go, pretty good. Right. So for me, it it's knowing who you are on each particular set. Uh, right. And it's knowing what that set is. And because it gets really confusing for me, I have found being more in the, being more, and I don't want to say just in charge because I don't always have to direct, yeah. but being part of the, the team that builds the thing. Yeah. You're part of all those discussions, so you know what it is. You know what the budget is. You know the AD. So the AD can say, I know you want to have a lot of fun in this. We have to do a company move and get an outdoor scene before the sun comes down. That's a huge scene. Yeah. This is a cashier scene. Right. So you go like, right, we can move kind of this one fast battles, so we can yeah. really sweat in that one. And if I'm not part of those conversations, it's really hard to know. Yeah. And so coming in for a movie like Tag for You, I've stopped trying to take those gigs because they're really tough with anxiety. You never quite feel good. You walk in, you're... You go, you're invited to somebody else's party, mm -hmm. but then the spotlight's on you. Yeah. And you're like, I don't even know the tone of this thing. Mm -hmm. And then you leave and you've, if this is the way I feel like I did the seventh inning stretch for the Cubs game and I was on the plane going back. This was years ago. And I started reading Twitter, which was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And one of the Cubs writers who I'd like had followed was like, that was almost as bad as like the Osborne. I think he just yelled it. And I was like, why did I say yes to this? <laughs> I just showed up, did this thing and left. I'm not part of it. Right, right. Fucking pass <laughs> next time, man. I'm not interested. Yeah, you know, I've, uh, I've often thought about that. The, 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 the take me out to the, the ball. ball okay. 
I feel. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You were getting critiqued for singing that? Killed. I thought I was like, is there a movie? Oh, no, my no, God. No, no, no. The Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Holy because shit. Because you get critiqued for everything. Oh, my God. Everybody's got an opinion on everything. That blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I also didn't nail it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But wait, wait. Did, yeah, did, did you practice it oh, go, yeah, yeah. going in? Oh, of course. And like, oh, I tried. I thought oh, about it. Okay, okay. Oh, you shit. know, I was thinking about Harry Carey. I was thinking yeah, yeah. about, like, growing up at Wrigley. The idea, uh, the spirit. I was like, I'm going to fucking go for it. And I had a bunch of beer. I was like, let's just fucking let it rip. You know, I got yeah. to do the, the radio commentary, which was really fun beforehand. You sit with the radio guys. Oh, I grew up with great. my dad. Like, my dad and I listened to that. I was like... With Ron and Pat talking the cut, I was yeah, like, "Here yeah. we go." And then I sat in the booth, and I was like, "Here we go." And I'm commenting on the game as it's happening. Top of the seventh, awesome. you're like, you know, as like a sports fan growing up, this was an out. I was like, "This is not real life." I was like, "Wow, you're seeing all their monitors. You get to do the nods with each other, where you'll be like, it's nice,' and they'll be like, "Yeah, it's all working." Then the third out happens, and then you hear like, and now presenting the seventh inning stretch, Chicago's own. And you're like, you're all geeked up. The problem is, is what you hear is a beat after than what you're singing. So you go, oh, one. And then you hear, oh, one. A two, a two, take, take me out to me out. And oh, and I wasn't warned of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a moment where I was like, <laughs> and then there's 30,000 people singing, and I'm like, oh, this is a bit of a mind game here. Oh, <laughs> and then you're like, now I'm in the, I got dropped in the ocean, there's concrete on my ankles, and I'm just going like this for a minute. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Then it ended. Everybody lied. It's yeah. like, great job. And then my brother was that member of the crew where everyone's like, you killed it. I'm like, did I? They're like, so good. And my brother goes like, you're not a singer. <laughs> yeah. like, you had fun. But yeah. what do you think? You're a singer? And oh, I was shit. like, God damn it. Well, that sounds like that cell phone call. Where you go, There's an echo. I'll call you back. Yes, right? that's what it is. And that's what you had to sing it's through. It's like you're pitching a huge meeting with an echo. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk. Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, that helps. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I often thought of those situations, even like if you sing the uh, Star uh, Star Spangled yes. Banner or whatever, of forgetting. Oh. Th did you have a fear of forgetting the words to that song? Yes. See, because yeah. I feel like I'd be up there going, right. and I want What I think about your business a lot, because, and I mean the stand-up <laughs> game, truly, because... You know, in our business, you know, you know, on tag, you know, when you do stuff like you forget to take, it's not live. So you go like, sorry, everybody. And it's embarrassing. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's shameful. Yeah. But it's shameful for this group. And then you go like, even if you have an anxiety attack, you go like, I'm sorry, everybody. I need 10. You can find it. When I think about stand-ups, you're at Madison Square Garden. You right. don't have a notepad in front of you. There's right. not a teleprompter. It's okay, though. Because oh. you know why? Why? The beauty of this, and then it, it, yeah. it's it's different because, yeah, you're, you're in front of people, but you just, you're talking. Yes. There's no script. Here, the, the yeah, tag, yeah, yeah. it's like, uh, it's not like you could just make the shit up and go, oh, uh, I, I forgot the yeah. lines. Let me just say this. Yeah. Sometimes, like, we'll forget a bit. We could play with the audience. What's going on with you? Why are you oh, wearing it? Interesting. So there's a yeah. lot of there's yeah. a lot and I of, could be doing a Woody Allen movie and I'd still be like, I'm handcuffed with these words. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Woody, can I riff? You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't you that's what you feel like you're trying to remember totally. the words. Yeah. It just it takes away from who you are. But if, you're like, a, if you're doing a big set and yeah. it's a big one. You don't have that anxiety in the back of your head of like, what if the brain just turns on me and I'm not there? Just the way we're talking about right, like right, right. singing the seventh and you go yeah. like, because you can start riffing with the crowd, but you're not at like the funny bone in Omaha. Okay. <laughs> you know, you can do it there. Like you're at Madison Square Garden. Well, it, it did happen on the Fallon show where I forgot my whole set. You, wait, what happened? Uh, it, it felt like 10 hours, but it was about 10 seconds where... I'm doing the act, and I... Oh, my God. And I couldn't see the cue cards. Yeah. It's on the cue cards. I couldn't see them, and I'm like, uh, nah, I'm, I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> At what stage of the game was this for you? This was, you know, this was not maybe six, seven years ago. Oh, and my Lord. And the problem I, is I, I didn't prepare enough going in. Yeah. Not that I didn't prepare the set. I was backstage. I had my mother and my, yeah, and my yeah, wife. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. like, it was a party backstage. Right. You're up. And I went, and I forgot. 
and I will never do that again, but it's more anxiety, at least for me, to be on set and flub a line or forget a line because I feel like I let 140, I people, I feel like I tag yes. minutes onto their day that they could have spent with their family yes, I agree with at this. the end. I so, understand that. So that's the pressure I'm yes. putting on myself. I, I, right? feel, I feel similar to that. You, so, you are letting down a group of people who are all right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's tough. And, yeah. and then, and then you mentioned earlier, you bring your kids to Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, and I've often wrestled with this. I'm a family guy. Yeah, yeah, love my love my wife. Love my kids. Is it bringing them on the road with you a distraction at times? Just because you come home, no, it's and is, it, it, it works out for you. Well, I think the other side is so. Well, it's my my kids. We stopped doing it. So I've had two careers. I had until my kids were like four and a half, and then everything before, and everything before was all building up to kind of doing whatever I wanted. You know, if a movie came, Tag, for example, Atlanta, who cares? Jeff Toms, it came, it, the idea was right, the contract worked. I was like, fun, let's go do it. My wife and the kids, we used production, rented a nice house in the Burbs. They found, we found like camps and things for them to do, and it was great. There was a time, I think it was right around pandemic, where uh, my kids had gotten into school. They were like starting to figure out their world. And my wife said very clearly, we're done following you. And I was like, <laughs> we and we, it wasn't it wasn't nasty. It wasn't. Yeah, no, it was yeah. like she didn't plan this. It wasn't right. like she pulled. The, it was like, yeah, I'm looking out for our whole group. Yeah, and this isn't working for our group going forward. And it was a big like, oh shit, because it wasn't a distraction for me. It was the best. Yeah. Problems for me is if I don't have my family and I'm in Atlanta for two months, because I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm in Atlanta for two months alone, and then I'm that degenerate in a bar and hanging out with the cast every night and going like, what are you assholes doing? <laughs> and then you go like, yeah, it's fun. Let's yeah. do that. Because when I get home, you put your kids to bed, then you look over your material and you think about the job. Yeah. If I'm in the bar, I'm not thinking about the job. And so after that, it's been a big adjustment going back to wide directing. Well, if I'm a part of the creative team, we shot my movie in Los Angeles on the east side. I was home every night. Mm -hmm. If you're not part of the creative team, you get a call from your agent saying, we got an offer for you. It's a great project. And you go like, fuck, these are some heavy hitters. And they go, it's shooting in rural Michigan. And you go, when? And they say like, October. Well, October means school in Los Angeles. Yeah. But I'm going to be in rural Michigan for two months. And so that's where I went like, oh, I got to I gotta flip this around a little bit and figure out how to make this work. All right. You mentioned DiCaprio and his process, and we asked everybody on the cast, have you ever come across in your career Tom Cruise? Have, have you ever been in a room with this guy? I worked with him. Oh, what, what movie? I did a movie called uh, Tag With Him, where I spent, not only was I in- Tag? No, I'm sorry. Uh, I was like, fuck, Tom Cruise was yeah. in Tag? <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy you were marrying, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the blonde hair. <laughs> this fucking dude doesn't know where he is. <laughs> tag was, we were trying to tag Tom Cruise's head. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I did uh, The Mummy With Him uh, in 20. 17 they were trying to launch a like a whatever i can't remember the studio i think it was universal was trying to create their marvel universe uh -huh. angelina jolie was going to be like bad frankenstein uh del toro was going to be a character i saw the artwork of it, it was like the a dark world of those characters right. and tom cruise was redoing the mummy and i was uh a one we were soldiers together uh and i died and became like a zombie or a vampire whatever zombie um, but not only did I work with him, we trained together uh, for two oh, wow. straight months. Okay. Oh, we right. did three weeks of stunts together in Africa. Hold on, I've been bro. on his private jet. Hold on, bro. Yeah, I know. Bro. I this, this, this is the closest we've been. <laughs> <laughs> this is the closest we've been. Shit. I mean, we uh, who who had an experience? I can see with... why Tom would hang out with this guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. fucking, that laugh alone, you get on my jet if I had one. <laughs> thank right. you, thank, thank you, good dude. I can't wait to hear this shit. Can I train with him? <laughs> Like knocking on each other's door. You ready? Well, I wouldn't say knocking on each other's. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's Tom and everybody else. Uh, you don't go to Tom's door and go, hey, you ready, Tommy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> somebody who works for him knocks on your door and says, fat ass, let's go. And you go, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. So wow. is this is this guy, yeah. is, is, he, is he glowing in real life? Because yeah. I, 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 in the movies, this guy looks like he's 
radiating an energy that I have yes. yet to see <laughs> either in me or anybody yeah. else. So what it is with uh, Tom and my big takeaway from it is I had been coming off of doing a lot of TV and a lot of kind of movies over the break and I was burning out. And part of our business I love. You know, part of it is the best. And the other part is you go like, oh, this is how the sausage is made. And the old kid dream of it, it is different. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of stars, you know, when you're with them, you go like, editing really saves your ass. <laughs> you know, like, you're some movie magic. Because whatever it is, like, I know you're winning all the awards and everyone says you're hot shit, but I'm not seeing much. And then you go, wow. great. And some people, you really see it and you go like, fun. And then you go like, well, this is just what it is. It's not for us doing it. It's for them watching it. Right. Then you work with Tom and whatever it is, yeah, <laughs> it's exploding out of his wow, ears. Right. Uh, and he loves it more than anybody. Uh, he So uh, here's a story that's a ridiculous story, but sums up who Tom Cruise is for me. We were in Namibia shooting uh, action stuff. Oh, sorry, sorry, wait, wait, Namibia, wait, wait. Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you said sorry, that. You, you said that like. Yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you said it like, we're in the splains. <laughs> yeah. No. I know. You're right. That's I know. on me. I know. Because yeah. I mean, when they said Namibia to me too, I went like this. Namibia. No, no. <laughs> but you, you fucking clap. We're in Namibia. You guys know. know. You said it like if you used it in Scrabble, I'd be like, I pick up the chips. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we're, we're down in Namibia, which is in South Africa, shooting an action movie together. And it's intense. Like, it's no joke. He doesn't fuck around. You know, like the stunts, there was like one, you know, the first time we did it, we're running across these buildings. We're on a three-story building that was rigged to like collapse. And then we fall off, hit the ground. The ground was built to shake and we get pulled. We practice it for a long time. We do the first take. It hurts. You know, like, I think something went wrong. My, you know, my breath got taken away. My back hurt. We call Cuddy, rushes over to me, and he goes, you okay? And I didn't want to say it in front of the stunt people who are true animals. But I was like, actor to actor, I got to say, like, we're sissies, right? <laughs> and I, he, you know, I was like, your name is Tom. My name is Jake. We fell off a building together. Yeah. And I went like, I don't know, man. I think something went wrong. And he goes, why? And I go like, because when I slammed the ground, like, I lost, like, it took my breath away. Like, it hurt. And he goes, well, you fell off a building, Jake. <laughs> and then he goes, are you injured? And I went like, no. And he goes, because you've done the way that we all taught you to roll, right? And I go, yeah, we drilled it so many times that like I hit the ground and rolled. And he goes, well, what do you think? It's going to hurt. You're doing a stunt. <laughs> and that's when I realized like, oh, this dude's an animal. We did that three more times. Oh, Why are you doing this? Like, 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 like isn't, tried, there, isn't there a stunt guy? So oh, he does all of them. Yeah, yeah. he does. He but does. But do you, I didn't do you? have a choice because oh, yeah. it's a two shot. Oh, so believe me, I tried to get out of it. Oh. <laughs> he didn't let he doesn't let you out. Yeah, but I like what I would do. Not just, a joke. He doesn't let you out. Just yeah. to be invited. <laughs> For real. When that wow. movie did badly. Uh, you know, it did fine overseas, but when it wasn't a hit, I yeah. called my agents and I go like, so what does that mean? And they go, it means they're n probably not going to do a sequel. I cried out of happiness. And that's a true story. Because <laughs> oh, wow. he told me afterwards, he's like, he wrote me into the ending where my character comes back and me and him ride off and we're going to a pyramid. And what he likes to do is he likes to kind of fuck with you a little bit. And he likes when you're scared. So like heights scare me because they're high up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't belong up there. Well, we would have to do stuff like we would have to propel down these like huge things. He would have me training in studios where I would have to climb to the top of a sound stage with a little rig and start going over and he would be cracking up when I was scared. <laughs> and all the stunt guys, and I would be like, it's scary, man. You're going up like a ladder a little bit like this. You know, you yeah. go to a sound stage, yeah. the way top. Oh, no yeah. shit. Some yeah. of those ladders go there. There was no rig on me. Oh, my God. So I'm like, yeah. this isn't like that. I'm going a little bit backwards. And I'm like, if I fall, I die. And yeah. the thought for him and his people are like, why would you fall? Hold on. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to do this. Oh. I want to be in tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Bleh. not even know if I'm in a scene. <laughs> this guy's like adrenaline rush, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But so, oh my yeah, god! So, but so we're in, uh, we're in Namibia. Oh, we're doing this stuff, and it's no joke, hard, like physically and scary hard. But before you went yeah, further, I, I got out of the building, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the cardio alone was a nightmare. <laughs> Sprinting like a block and a half each take. Keep going. Do you get the call for this movie saying you got got the movie? 
and you're so amped that you're in the movie with Tom Cruise. Yes. Is all this like, yeah, you're going to be doing scaling. Is this? No, that's not how it happened. Yeah. So, so you're finding this out. You go, uh, you climb the wall. You go, uh, what? Yeah. So okay. here's the, here's the real life of what happened. I get a call saying, uh, Alex Kurtzman, the director of it, uh, is doing a movie and he's a great guy, very talented dude. Very nice. Uh, he's doing a movie with Tom Cruise. He really likes you for a part. Are you interested? I contacted Olivia Wilde. Tom I, really likes you. No, Alex Kurtzman, the director. Oh, oh okay. So I got linked to him. Uh, uh, Olivia Wilde, who I did Drinking Buddies with, had worked with him. So I did the thing where I texted her and I go, tell me about this guy. And she goes, as nice as it gets, great collaborator. So I was like, all right, pretty cool. And then it shot in London. I brought it up to my wife and my wife was like, if we have a chance to do a Tom Cruise movie, I think we'd do it. That would be fun. Right. So no script, nothing. He said Tom would be really interested in improvising with you because he knows how much you like to kind of like improvise and loosen it up. And going back to that two-shot stuff we were talking about, I love the game to work with talented people. You got the best seat in the house. So I'm like, man, I get to improvise with Tom Cruise and like mix it up with him. I, I fucking, I don't know how to say no. There was no script. Right. They said, are you interested? So I said, yes. Six weeks later, I get the script. The whole first 30 pages are me and him as soldiers running through the Mideast getting attacked. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> so going back to Chicago and my dad, that was his reaction. <laughs> He's like, Tom and I go, he goes, buildings. <laughs> like, Dad, well, you as a soldier. <laughs> this is an idea I don't like. <laughs> so when I read that, yeah. knowing who he is, I know it's going to be two shots. I know Chris and Vale, those were the characters that would be running. He wants the camera in front. So if the camera's in front and pulling us, how do you get a stunt double? Yeah. You got to get uh, a stunt double if you shoot from behind. Right. Well, he makes his money because they know it's him. So if we jump in a hole together, the shot's not going to be he jumps in, cut to wide, the back of some other guy jumping uh, in. <laughs> yeah. And you You're coming gonna... out after lunch with your tea bag. How did the jump yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, man. It's not gonna be but, that. But Jake, isn't that let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Let's be it's an adult form of peer pressure going on. Cause if that was Kevin Bacon, you'd be like, figure I, the jump shit out. Okay, yeah. I'll be at the craft service. No, no but with question. Tom Cruise, and he knows that. No question. He knows you're going home to your wife going, We might die, but it is Tom Cruise. No, yeah, He's yeah. like, fucking yeah. jump, jump off the building, Jake. You're we got right. bills. These are facts. He's totally. I'm surprised you're not a Scientologist, to be honest with you guys. They passed. <laughs> I would have been. I'm like, whatever you want, uh, I'm in. Well, you're like a male Leo Remini. You'd have been nothing but trouble on the back end. Yeah, suppressant person. <laughs> if you if you define an SP, you're yeah. looking at it. Not only would you quit, you'd do a movie about the religion, a comedy. I would be doing a comedy about it while doing it, going like, there's a lot of money in selling you guys out. <laughs> uh, but so, so when Are we I get, calling Tom Cruise at the end of the second? Yeah, so <laughs> so when I get the script, yeah. I you know it, all the jokes stopped for me, mm -hmm. and I thought like they just got the wrong guy. I, this just isn't me. Uh, I'm also not interested in it. I don't want to do action. I don't watch these movies. This I'm the I'm the wrong guy. I thought it was going to be like his brother. So we're doing bits, and then he's jumping out of planes. Oh, and so yeah. you know, I just thought like I know what Kurtzman was probably thinking, but it's not right. So I contacted my team and said, like, I think I'm out. And it got back to Tom. And Tom said, uh, if he wants to quit, he's allowed to, but he's got to do it to my face. I'd never met him. We had no direct link at that point. I was shooting New Girl. So I was like, well, where is he? And they said, London. He's doing pre-production. And I go, how does this work? Oh, have you already signed on to the movie? No, but I had verbally said yes to the lawyers and they had started building stuff based off my look. So I didn't realize at the time when it benefits the studio, it's not about a signed contract. <laughs> when it benefits, it's like an NFL contract. It works for the team. So by me saying yes, I had said yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long story kind of short, oh I uh, yeah. You had to fly to, to I London. Fi to I finish work on a Friday, uh, you know, a 10 hour TV day, single cam. I get on a plane. I'm literally wearing cargo shorts and a t shirt and flip flops because I'm like 11 hours on a plane. I'm having some drinks. Oh. I land. I think I'm going to like shower, put on like nice Man, clothes. You uh -huh. never know who you sit next to on a plane. <laughs> 
<laughs> you fucking going to England to tell right. Tom Cruise no? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. All right. You never know. Wait. So, so is this? Is, 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 is this on your own dime? No, no, no. Studio covers everything. <clears throat> the studio's paying. The studio's you paying to fly me to, out. to come out of the, to to say to, no to the movie to, to talk to Tom about the movie. Okay. So then I get to the airport. I land the driver. I go uh, out close to the hotel. He goes, "You're not going to the hotel. You're going to go to the studio." And I go, "No, I want to go to the hotel." And he goes, "I'm working for the movie, and they want to bring you to the studio." So I show up at the studio in shorts, flip flops, t-shirt. No, no shower, nothing. Uh, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Please, I, this is, um, this You're is not such a great it. story. I don't like your flight wear. I, 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 he thought I he thought he had a chance to change. Yeah, I did. No, the, I don't time to change. He's on a flight oh. with flip flops. Oh, bro, yeah, you're yeah, going yeah, to yeah, you're yeah, going yeah, to tell yeah, Tom Cruise no. You could come naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. already a rock star. Yeah. They're flying you to tell Tom Cruise I no. No, international flight with shorts on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, here's why I liked it. Here's why I was okay with it. You're in those little space bubbles. So, oh, so uh, well, you know, yeah. the first class, yeah. they're flying you in these little tiny bubbles by yourself. So once I get in, yeah. I'm just in my own galaxy. I was, I was going to sleep. I, you know, I was coming from work. I'm not going to put like a suit on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So I was like, could I have worn pants and shoes? Yes. Am I pretending it's just suits or flip flops? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you have an outfit you planned on putting on for the meeting? Yes. I, I had a change of clothes. Was it? It wasn't a suit. You're not. It a was suit close guy. to this, but oh, it was cool. more like I'm ready for this thing. Okay. okay. I thought I was gonna have time to shower. I, I thought it would most likely they were gonna give me a night to like sleep and recoup, yeah. which is how it mostly goes when you right. go overseas for a job. Mm. You have like the first 15 hours are yours. Oh wow. But I get to the studio. I meet Tom right away. He's very nice. Uh, he says, let's go up. He introduces me to the whole cast, the whole crew. Uh, he sh walks me around to all the different prop rooms. And I'm thinking, like, I know this move, but it's not. I'm not interested. We He then comes to my office and talk. We're walking upstairs. And before we go to the stairs, he goes, I hear you're a little nervous about the stunts. And I go, yeah. And he goes, do you feel comfortable walking upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> and I went like, you fucking guy. You, and I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, good. And then gives me a smile where I was like, Holy there's a big shit. difference between walking upstairs and jumping out of a plane with you, you fucking maniac. Oh my God. And that was my, so then I got the like, you know, and you feel it. You're like, are we being nice or are we being dicks? Right. And if you're dicks, you still can be friends. But you're like, oh, now we're going to go out. And I was like, all right, we're in that vibe. That's better for me. Because I'm saying no. Then we sat and talked, and that meeting, I don't remember, the, I don't want to exaggerate, but it was more than two hours. And direct eye contact, sitting across from each other like this, and he's saying, like, what are, why are you saying no? And I had to say, like, I'm afraid, and I said, like, because you're, I know about you. You hang on the side of planes, my man. <laughs> You're not a mystery to me. I've been reading about you for years. That's just not my bag. And then he would say, like, do you think I can afford for you to get hurt? Think about it. Has anyone ever gotten hurt on my movies with me? And I'd be like... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, do you think I would have you do this tomorrow? And he goes, I go, no. And then he goes, so I'm going to get you great trainers. And we're not shooting this until August. And it was something like February. So I just need you to say yes each day to try and, and I will get you ready. And in my head, I'm thinking like, he's winning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's know. beating me at a debate, but I, I knew I was the winner coming in. And right. by the end of it, I finally was like, you know, then we would take breaks right. of like from that. We would like stop talking and I'd go like, you're so good at Magnolia, man. <laughs> and he'd be like, thanks. And I'd be like, any good stories about it? And he's like, sure, Jake. And so I'm like, now we're doing this part of oh, it? Man. Then I get to, and I'm like, why don't you do more character stuff? You're so good. And he's like, no international. I'm like, you're so cool. <laughs> and then he would go back and he'd be like, you're telling me you're afraid to try. And I'm like, I'm not afraid to try. I'm afraid to die. <laughs> yeah. And then by the end of it, he was like, I'm just asking you to show up when I give you a trainer. And I promise you, you'll be fine. And in truth, I was fine. It was a great experience. Wow. But man. it was different than any. It was like there's Hollywood, there's the business I've done, yeah. and then there's that movie. And had that movie been successful, there's no getting out. So then he and I would have been in Brazil and he would have had like a snake on my shoulder because I'm afraid of snakes. Right. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would have had to do underwater stuff. Uh, he said, like, Are you good on horses? And I'm like, No. 
and I don't like horses. Yeah. So I then had to train with horses. I was galloping around the field in England on horses because he and I rode around on horses in Africa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But they'd be dolls of you and Target. What's that? But yeah, they would yeah, also yeah, be yeah, dolls yeah, of you exactly. and Target, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it was a wild experience. Man, man. man. Truly I mean, wild. Wow, what a great story. Even, yeah, even you retelling the story of him convincing you to do it. Yeah. I would do it just even hearing that story. Yeah. Can you imagine having him in front of you with, yes. the, with the thing and the intensity? Yeah. And, the, and also going back to who he is as the number one saying that it's coming out of him. Uh, he also really cares about movies and what he really cares about entertaining people. So the biggest influence I got from him in terms of what this game's about is as long as I'm playing, once you sign up to a project, really care. So, and this isn't talking shit about a tag, but when you were talking about the scene, I didn't remember the scene you were talking about. And that's what I was saying. I wasn't even sure if I was there, but because, but what I mean by that is this. I wasn't radiating. <laughs> Jake wasn't there. I don't think I was there. But what I mean by it is before Tom, I would take a certain gig and it would be about the experience, having fun. And I'm not even thinking that much about the material. Mm. I want to be in the scenes and really work hard. But what happens after I leave has very little to do with me. It's the director, it's the studio, it's their push. Being around him reminds you of like, you're doing this because you love this and it's for the audience. So I've really changed and I care way more about audiences and what that connection is. And there was a period before him where I was thinking more like, well, you're doing this for like your own experience and the money mm -hmm. and it's a nice lifestyle. Yeah. And that was the big takeaway of like to be a true number one, which is what he is. You are in a relationship with the audience and you care and he cares more than anybody. Wow. And I'm like, Pretty fucking great, man. Wow. Yeah, exciting. Is he referring to a, a script at all while you're on set, or does he just have it in there and, you know, he's... Yeah, so... Uh, he, did you yes. feel intimidated? Because I don't know your process. Are you, like, looking at lines before you go, oh, and, and and you're looking at him, and, and he's not doing that? Is there any... He, he sticks pretty close to it. He's not a big improviser. Uh, but he's thinking about everything. So he knows the lenses on the camera and what that means in terms of performance in a way that I didn't even know we were supposed to think of. So he would say like, this is a really tight one. So if you do big reactions, it's going to look really big on the big screen, but in the wide, that's okay. And at that time, I'd never thought of that stuff. Mm. So I was like, huh. And he would also do things where he would go like, your comedic rhythm is he goes, if there's the joke, you add words and you talk fast. And he goes, it works here in America. That's not going to translate to other countries. You need to slow down. And hearing little thoughts like that, I'm like, oh, you're just thinking differently. Yeah. And yeah. so what I would do with him is, which was a different process than I've done with anybody else. And he didn't want to do this, but uh, we worked out one day and we were doing a big scene where it's me and him walking down some tunnel or whatever. Uh, and he would, he wants you to do your thing, but he does have it in his head, what the scene's supposed to be. And so I said to him, before we go out there, can you and I run this scene once the two of us? And he goes, yeah. And we ran it and I could tell he wasn't loving it and he was thinking about something, but I wasn't getting what he was thinking of. And I said, will you do me a big favor and will you run this scene as both characters? I can't believe you have some nerve. Yeah. Telling Tom Cruise to do all this stuff. Asking, asking. <laughs> but, well, the, and the re know, but the I reason know. is, is if somebody really has a vision yeah. and you don't know what that vision is, I can go waste your time for 10 minutes trying to find it. Right. Or you can just tell That's me. That's huge of you to do that, yeah, though. But it's it's also, very generous. I'm, well, it's Tom Cruise. So we are all servicing your vision now. This isn't a shared thing. Yeah. So how do you see this scene? And he said, no, he didn't feel comfortable. He's like, you're an actor. I want you to have your instinct. And I said, I'm telling you, it will help. And we sat in the gym and he did the scene as both. And his energy was higher. His The way he saw me was more like, bah, bah, bah. And he wanted pace, pace, pace. I never would have done that instinctually because I go slow. I like to take beats. I like to yeah, take pauses. Yeah. I like to react. I like when the other person comedically scores and then I can get a reaction laugh. And I was like, oh, I'm giving him exactly what he doesn't want here. That's why we're doing nine takes in the wide. So I was like, just tell me, man. 
And then wow. when we did it his way, then he can finesse that on set. <clears throat> but there was a lot with him of like, it's a different universe. Yeah. Oh, man. What yeah, an it experience. Was wild. What an experience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably like a never again, but what? Yeah, yeah. Wild. Every story you told him makes it understand why you would kind of not root for a mummy too <laughs> <laughs> well for certain actors i think they're like this is the dream yeah uh it's the biggest production i've been part of you know the food was so good like What's the food <laughs> oh. he has like you know you have like your craft service then you have catering then he's got like the tom cruise chef but you could also he opens it up to everybody so then there was like another little pop-up thing. Here's another funny Tom oh, Cruise wow. moment. He's got his own thing. There was <laughs> one day everybody's drinking out of these tiny little cups, right? And you're on set, everyone like, you know, everyone's got these weird little cups. And I'm like, what is that? And somebody goes like, it's a Tom Cruise espresso or whatever. And I went like, sure. I Whatever you guys are all drinking, I'm going. There's this little like Colombian dude that looks like, it's almost like it looks like a lemonade stand. You know, it's not a nice setup. Yeah. And I go, what are you doing? And turns out he had won a, like the competition in Central America to have like best espresso. Tom Cruise heard about it, flew his ass to our set in London so that we could all have, and I'm like, this is another galaxy. And then you drink it and I'm like, this is good. And the guy goes, no, it's the best. <laughs> And I'm like, you're right, man. This is the fucking, oh, and I'm going to say it. This is God the best. Oh, He's like a, a Richard Branson <laughs> type, yes, right? He Just like, He's a monster. Oh, He's my. a monster. <laughs> but every day, it, your, your life doesn't belong to you. So that's really nice. It's really fun. He knows your kids. He knows your wife. He knows everyone's names. But wow. I would get a text from somebody in his team saying, it'd be like Friday night, and he'd say, tomorrow morning, Tom wants to work out with you. So we we was gonna do something. <laughs> you, you're the the town car's in front of your house the next morning and you're in that car. Wow. And so you're like, oh, like, oh, I see what this is. It's no matter like you're in his world until that movie ends. Yeah, wow. And you just go like, oh, interesting. This yeah. is different. Yeah. If another actor who's the lead goes, I want to work out on Saturday, you go like then work out. <laughs> yeah. I hope you get really big, my friend. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so do you, How do you even bench with Tom Cruise? Go one more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everything you did with him, I'd be like, wouldn't you be like, this is not happening? It when was, am I going to yes. wake up? Splash yeah, water yeah, on my yeah, face. Yeah. I'm fucking <laughs> doing reps with Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> so do you... Um, do you have a group of friends from Chicago that you still keep in touch with? Or are you that type of guy? Like you do a lot of these movies and you're picking friends from these th different projects. I've and got the crew that I first came up with, but we were all uh, doing this game together. And then I don't know if you guys are similar in this, but there's the people that you first started with. And then there's like people who come and you meet and they join the group. And I, what's kind of happened to me was it was really about the old team and then kind of kids start, and that phases a lot out. So I still have, my buddy used to say, he goes, in all your projects, you can see the breadcrumbs of you trying to hold on to old friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And just recently, yeah. in the last few years, like, <clears throat> now we're 45. You know, it used to be every project I would do, I'd do these, like, indies in Chicago, and there'd be, like, a buddy I grew up with who's in it. And then he's now the second lead, and we're doing, like, an introducing uh, but that has finally started to kind of fade. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I'm reaching out more to kind of like random peers and just saying like, I respect you. Like if I'm going to sneak away from the family and get a coffee, it'd be nice to see where your brain is at. That's cool. Yeah, but it's a, it's a whole different, I'd always been, you know, a tag, everybody's together. I'm in a house 45 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And it had always been the idea of I'm doing my own thing. I like everybody. But just recently, I'm like, you know, the changing tides of our business and keeping up with the different stuff. I'm like, where's your heads at? What like when I did my movie Self Reliance, Andy Samberg and Akiva and Yorma, the Lonely Island guys, produced it, and it was the first time I was very jealous because those three dudes grew up together. They're good friends, and they're all really talented. Yeah, and when they were helping me on mine, I was like, you guys do this with each other, <laughs> and they're like. Yeah, every project. And I'm like, oh, 
fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice to have like some of the most talented guys in the game right. be in my buddies who go like, let me read you a script. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, let me read it. Got a part for me in it? <laughs> yeah, I got a part for you. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, oh, I, I felt, I was like, ooh, that is a, that's a cool thing. Have you done that yet, though? Because, you know, the minute you open that up, then you got to turn to your wife and go, I don't like anything the guy gave me. His notes suck. I know. <laughs> There's a reason why I do this myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So were you doing this? Were you falling in love with this as a kid? This business? Yeah, acting. And, and this, was this the, the dream from the get-go? I, I think, how about you? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, second grade, I knew I was I was going to be a comedian. Is that true? Oh, wow. Yeah, I told my second grade class I, I want to do comedy. I, I fell in love with comedy early on. I was watching Danger Fields and all that yeah, stuff yeah, early yeah. on, and I just was fascinated by it. So I kind of knew in the back of my head I was headed there. And you wanted, you were like, hey, I know it's stand up. Uh, I know it's stand up. Yeah, oh, it was nothing okay. other than other than stand up. And then when I got into stand up, I'm like, oh yeah, let me let me kind of play around the entertainment business. But That's cool. um. Has this been the from you the the I mean you didn't yeah. want to be an accountant no, at, uh, was, uh, at eighteen. And... It, it was similar in that at a young age it was the you know honestly it was the Bill Murray types, it was the idea of being in an ensemble the old photos of the original SNL group. Did you ever want to be a part of that? Uh, SNL. Yeah. I think when I was probably like a teenager. Yeah. How about you? Nah, I mean, I, I was a fan growing up. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know. I didn't have a lot of character, you know, like right. I felt like I wouldn't really be. I, I like working alone. You do? Because <laughs> I, try, I tried improv at the Second City. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did the classes yeah, yeah. there and whatnot. What'd you think? I got mad at the, my partner. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm talking about like, I'd, I'd be looking at him going, it's sad funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just feel like I, I need to be alone. Up <laughs> so you went from Second City and then you just, were you in Chicago? Were you doing, what's the place right near Second City? Uh, uh, I didn't do comedy in Chicago. Oh, you didn't? No, I, I moved here to do comedy. So, Interesting. Yeah, I didn't, I know Chicago's a big comedy scene, yeah, but yeah. I didn't do it. I started out here. But uh, yeah, and I had really no aspirations for Saturday Night Live or, or anything like that. But you, you were, you were, I mean, I was, I was interested in the world of it. Uh, coming from my family, there was, you know, and I think it's probably similar to you guys that there was no direct link to the game. So it wasn't like a realistic yeah. path. Right. So I, I wasn't like as a kid, like I'm going to be an actor, but I knew, you know, just in all honesty, when my family were all like, we all like watched television. We liked cheers. We liked Roseanne. And that was something we all sat around the TV and watched together mm -hmm. and we could laugh and everybody enjoyed it yeah. and everybody liked a different part of it. And I was very jealous of those people in the TV. Yeah. I was like, I like being the guy making my mom laugh. <laughs> oh, wow. I, you, you really, you really. But uh, like that the, feeling of like. Stop making my mom laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fucking job. <laughs> but that feeling of like, we're all staring at this. That feels like where I want to be. Right. It's like, I don't really know what that is, but that's it. Right. You know, like Norm, Woody, even Coach, where you're like, these guys are so funny. And that looks like, you know, I came from a group, you know, my uncles and aunts in Chicago, there was like that Boston feeling, Roseanne, that feeling of like, regular people being really funny. Then you would see a Murray with his mustache where you're like, he looks like us. Yeah. And I get this tone. I get this thing. So I knew I wanted that. But I didn't really know what that was until the kind of the second half of high school. High school, I ended up dropping out my sophomore year for a little bit. Hold on. Like, yeah. This is fascinating. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're, you're probably that, like at the same. Yeah, go ahead. You ever have people like that, that drop out of school? Yeah. And that's like so foreign to me. Like, <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> like, how does it? I know. <laughs> like, remember, no, I just, you, I remember telling you one makes it, the other nine are <laughs> yeah, living yeah. behind a gas station. <laughs> 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 so so I, the idea of that um, is crazy foreign. How, how does it? Yeah. yeah how does yeah. that? How does that work at home when you go, hey, my dad, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take a break? Yeah. <laughs> well, I you know, know, right? Well, what's funny now is I now know uh, the story that I've always had until I had my kids and they, we found out that they were dyslexic and then we found out that I was dyslexic. The story before that was way crazier because with nobody in my family knew what happened. I didn't know anything. I hadn't learned anything in school. So it's not like I dropped out and I was getting like A pluses and everybody right. liked me at school. Right. I was just fucking around in the back. 
And then there was a class assignment. It was something, I think it was my sophomore year and it was October. And I had to read a book and do an in-class assignment. I was getting like D's and this was the big one. And I said to my mom, I can't go to school tomorrow. And she said, why? And I go, we have an in-class essay about this book that to this day, I can't remember the title of the book. And she goes, okay, so you want to skip school because if you fail that, now you're at an F in English. And I go, yeah. And she goes, are you going to read the fucking book tonight? And I go, no. And she goes, you're going to read the book tomorrow. And I went, no. And she goes, when are you going to read the book? And without thinking, I said, I'm never going to read the fucking book. <laughs> so we kind of yeah. smiled at each other. And then she, it was like a, oh, so if you're never going to read the book and you're just barely above water, you're going to sink. And so she said, so what does that mean? And I go like, I don't know. And then she said, so if you're not going to school, then you're not going to school. And I think for her, it was the, now you've got to see what the world is. And so I said, yes. Then an hour later, I changed my mind and I said, I think I'm going to go to school. And she said, you made your bed. And my uncle Eddie, who was living with us at the time, hanging neon signs up and down Clark Street, I started working with him. I wasn't in the luxury of going to like a nice suburban school yeah. with, you know, teachers who care about you. Where'd you go? Uh, I was in New Trier. Oh, New but Trier. we lived in Evanston. Uh, I would take the train to school. And so I wasn't in that environment anymore. Now I was in the city with my uncle working and it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I was like, oh, I liked that other thing right. a lot more. But that other thing required you got to work hard. So that year was off. Uh, and then the next year I went back to school as a year younger. And when I got back, I was like, I'm a writer. I want to act. I want to try. I would apologize to teachers and say, like, I'm in. If I'm doing something bad, let me know. Uh, to this day, my anxiety dreams is that I'm in high school and I have another semester, but I'm my age. Because oh, <laughs> you're yeah. like, because I went back and like my peer group were now juniors. Right. And I was like, fuck, I'm now screwed. So then my senior year, when all my group left, I was doing all the plays, I was writing, I was begging teachers to like stay. I was like, I can't fuck up twice. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it ended up being a, you know, a positive thing, but it was a very weird 10 months. Wow. Yeah. A crazy 10 months. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man. You're like the old man who was hanging signs for you when you came back like your senior year. Yeah, yeah. Only one year older than everyone in your class <laughs> yeah. makes yeah. you seem really old. Yeah, yeah. And you were gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. tough, man, right? <laughs> Fuck it. That's the dude who hung signs with his uncle for a year. <laughs> Everybody he knows is a duke and shit now. <laughs> you Look at you, know, baby. <laughs> Fucking making movies with Tommy C. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, Where that, are you from, man? Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's his, uh, the, the folklore back home is, you know, they always like, you know that guy, Jay? Yeah. yeah no, that guy that took a year off. <laughs> That's it, man. I talk about being scared straight, right? Hanging neon signs. Yeah, well, I mean, but yeah. the truth is, what it really did do was, and you know, I got kids. I would obviously, that's not the path they're going to go down. But when you have the, I had an attitude, and I yeah. did really feel like I knew it all, and I felt like I don't need this. Yeah. And then when you start working, and you realize what that other thing is. That life sucks. Yeah. And that life is hard. And my uncle, the reason I asked where you're from, like, he's a Chicago character and he talks big shit and he has big fun. He was different around me when I was in school with my mom. He was her younger brother. But when we're working together, yeah. all of a sudden I'm like, I'm receiving a different level of like shit talk. To other people, they would go, like, he's like, this is my work. And he's like, he's my nephew. He's a fucking dope. Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. not even in school. He's 15. It's illegal. Yeah. And I'd be like, well, I'm probably going back. He goes, you'll never fucking go back. He's a fucking dope. He doesn't know nothing. And I'd be like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't really what I thought it was well, going to be, man. I would like hang out with him and my other uncle. And I was like, I'm being talked about like the fucking loser of losers. Wow. My uncle was starting to teach me like little hustles and schemes so that like, He's like, well, if you're dropping out now, you don't go back. You're not skilled with your hands. You got to figure something out. Yeah. But my ego always thought like, 
I'll probably go back to some version of a school. Yeah. And so you have to go like, oh, shit, man. The rubber's meeting the road, and I don't like it at all. Uh, yeah. And yeah. no one going back, I'm not going to be like a biology guy. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe playwriting. Why? Because it's just dialogue. <laughs> it must be weird, because my uncle was a plumber, and I'd work with him in summers. Yes. And you do see the other side. Yes. So then years later, you're doing your thing. Now you see your uncle at Christmas parties. like, I... That one year I saw it. I get it. Yeah. And you see really fast, like their hands. Yeah. Where you're like. So much more respect for them than you yes, had before. Man. Because you know how fucking hard that is. And uh, when you see, like, you know, your uncle's hands where he's working with stuff, you're like, your hands are fucking beat to shit and your back hurts and your knees hurt, but you're still doing it. Yeah. And for me, I was like, fuck, I'm a bit of a puss, man. This is hard. I I'm know. on a neon sign, like, it's high up, yeah. but nobody's yeah. saying like, uh -huh. are you okay? Which <laughs> yeah. my mom would have said. Yeah. She would have been like, don't put Jake up there. And I'd be like, yeah, don't put Jake up there. And then <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, when you're doing the job, the job is to get done. And that was the beginning of reality. Wow. Wow, man. Yeah. Um, man, I'm going to plug your movie here, Self-Reliance yeah. on uh, Hulu. Yes, right? Hulu. Yes. Go check out Jake's movie. I, I, before we leave, and you mentioned this before, we got to rewind again. Please. You said you were on... Cruises jet. Yeah. Now, just take us through the jet. What's like uh, offered for for food on the? It, it, yeah, it, it, I just want I, it, paint a picture for us people who who are never going to get that opportunity. What's on the jet, and what's do you sit down before he does, no. or is he on? He's on. The, he's on. He's on, and then you come on. Yes, he's on. Oh. He's is it on. his or is it a rental? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's his. I don't know. Here's what here's the truth of what that story was was we were going from London to Africa and it was a 12 hour flight. So my family, which was with me in London, was not going to be with me in Africa. And the Africa thing I knew was going to be three weeks of hard stunts. I was very excited for that flight because I was going to sit back. It was going to be the end of the London. I was going to drink. I was going to chill out. I was going to get to Africa. I was going to take a day. And then I'm in his galaxy. A day and a half before, they, the production had booked my flight. I had my seat, I had all of it. I get a call from Tom's people saying, Tom wants you and Annabelle, the, uh, the lead female, to be on his plane with him. And I went like, but I, I got my ticket. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to get the meal, I'm going to get the drinks. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for my situation. Oh, sure, I'm not man. flying in the back of coach for 12 hours. I'm going to be in a space bubble. I need to get drunk one more time one before more, I work with Tom Because Bruce. I'm not going to in Africa. <laughs> Yeah. So in Africa, I'm on his time. Yeah. Like, this is still my time. Right. Uh, and they said, you know, that he would like you and Annabelle because he wants you guys to rehearse. Oh, come on. Oh, man. This <laughs> guy. What a pain. That's what it takes. That's right? what it, so there was no alcohol. Oh. There's not a sip of alcohol on his plane. He didn't drink. So you get there and, you know, you've been on a private plane. They're tight. Like, they're wonderful in Instagram photos when you see, like, a bunch of models in them. Yeah. But in reality, like, it's a... Tight little submarine. It ain't a bubble. It ain't a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, it's cool that you don't have to wait, but you're like, all right. Yeah. So you're sitting in this tight thing. Me and her are here. He's there. We rehearse for a little bit at a table. It's, it's in, you're now in an office. Yeah. Food, whatever you want to eat. He's got something. He's got snacks, whatever it is. And then the bit he did, which was very funny, was he's like, I'm going to go in the back and sleep. And our little couches turned into beds. So we all had his own. And then he goes, you guys want to watch a movie? And to her credit, Annabelle goes, got any good Tom Cruise movies? <laughs> <laughs> and then this fucking dude rolled with the bit and pitched his movies where he's like, you like sports comedy? And then he would pitch that. You guys like war movies. And we were like dying laughing. <laughs> oh, saying, but he like, he like pitched his bits. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then we great. like, you know, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Did you see that? Without that, you'd have been drunk on a Delta flight. Now you're bonding before we even start <laughs> practicing. Yeah. I could have been bonding with a stranger. <laughs> 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 wow, yeah, man. It's fun. Wow, that's man. so cool. But, uh, Thanks what? for sharing so much of that with yeah, us, bro. Yeah, that's fun. The, the time, that's why I got thrown at the beginning with the time because I, I haven't thought about these stories in a while. You know, like you do a weird experience yeah. and then you put it away. And then when you said you worked with Tom, because for me, that was such like a weird chapter of my life where I was like, oh, yeah, man. There's like, there's a whole other right. book yeah. of stories. That's crazy. Every day there would be something that you'd go like, that's really unique. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's different. Press was different with him. <laughs> totally. But every, you'd be like, 
man, I've, I've never seen it like this, my man. Well, it sounds like you, you learned, you know, some good lessons there and took them on with you to other projects as far as, you know, like even thinking that, that the lens, you know, yeah, like, yeah, I don't even know stuff. what the hell we're using here. Yeah. You? No, no, I didn't even give it a second thought. <laughs> well, I like the way you say, you know, when Tom says you want to work out, you have to work out. But then when we were talking about friendships, you yeah. go, well, now I call peers that I'd like to hang out with. Like, because you're at a level now, <laughs> they're going to answer and go, I'll get coffee with you. Yeah. Imagine saying that when you first got out here. That's got to be cool, though, when, you, when you're Don't asking a peer to get, what if they, you know, like, Kiefer yeah. Sutherland said, no, thank you. Like, would you be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, did you ever have someone say, I'm yeah, good? Yeah, of course. Or, really? <laughs> Does that, like, we've had people we asked to come on the cast and said, no. We don't even. I don't watch your movies now. I'm you've not, had people. You've asked them one to guy. Out. One guy in particular is like yeah, focusing on my cast, focusing on your cast. What does that even fucking yeah, yeah. mean? Yeah. They're an hour I agree. I agree. You know? That's a no. That's an <laughs> LA no. You're dead to me. Yeah, by the way, I, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I was talking to my buddy Joe last night. Uh, we do these <laughs> indies together, and they go, "The best fake excuse is." Would love to. Such big fans. Uh, just so slammed right now on my own project. And uh, it's the same thing. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> fuck off then. Slam. And then instantly you go Ooh. like, you offer them a job. A second later you go like, I don't even like their work. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did a thing where working on a project. With, and, what you know, did I see? Yeah. The guy's not even fucking good. <laughs> I'm the fucking dope for asking him. He would have ruined the project. He calls back on me and I go, I'm a diehard fan. <laughs> You're as good as it gets. Oh, well, I've joked with him. I'll join Scientology if Tom asks me to for the movie. For the movie. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think it's the craziest religion. He's like, will you join me in my movie? I'm like, guy, I'll be a pope of your shit. <laughs> would so. I join? I'd love to join. <laughs> wow. Well, so fun hanging with you, bro. Yeah, yeah appreciate thanks you Thanks for coming oh, on. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, appreciate man. it. That's thanks, it. Thanks, thanks for watching Pete and Sebastian show. Sure.